Hello, I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man. My guest is Simon Block. Simon is a partner within JMW's Employment Law Department. So, Simon, there's been a dispute between the union Usdor and the supermarket chain Tesco, seemingly in relation to fire and rehire. What has Usdor asked for? Yeah, so what Usdor have done, Usdor are a recognised trade union um, within Tesco, um, and it lit fire and rehire is literally as simple as it is it is, is stated um, an employer seeks to buy out um, a set of terms and conditions that it is previously offered to employees um, in return for employee agreeing um, a new set of terms and conditions so in terms of the fire and the rehire um, in order to achieve the new set of terms and conditions that the employer wants to have in place they will fire, they will terminate the contracts of the employees and offer them re-employment on these new terms and conditions that Tesco wanted them to have. Um, and in return, there was, there was an offer of a buyout um, in relation to the original terms and conditions um, that Tesco offered. Usdor sought an injunction um, on behalf of its employees from Tesco doing that. So, Simon, what did the court decide in the case? Yeah, so it's probably useful to have a look at some of the background as to how we've ended up here. Um, we've got a period between this dates back quite a number of years, back to 2007 um, and 2009 with Tesco, where they undertook a huge project of expansion. Um, it resulted in the closure of a number of distribution centres and expansion uh, or opening and others. And in order to ensure that the sites would continue to function well, Tesco were offering um, distribution staff an alternative to redundancy, and they were giving them a contractual entitlement to some type of retained pay as an incentive to remain with the business um, and for others to relocate their site. So the retained pay was an enhanced payment um, that would, was effectively a form of pay protection for those employees who would agree to relocate. They brought in the trade union, Usdor, who agreed that these employees would be entitled to retain the difference between their existing packages and the value of their new terms and conditions, which would apply at the new site that they were going to work at. And at the time, Tesco issued um, documentation regarding this retained pay, which provided information to the employees um, as to what that the, what that they would receive, um, and in the documentation, Tesco described the payments in the terms of this retained pay as being protection for life, which would remain for as long as they were employed by Tesco in their current role, and that's quite important. That language for as long as that they re were were retained in their current role, because there was a whole argument before the courts as to what that exactly meant. Um, there was a collective agreement that was entered into between Usdor and Tesco, which described the entitlement um, as a permanent feature of individual contracts, and they were subject to various different types of limitations, such as promotion or where um, the, the, there was agreement by mutual consent to, to vary that. So what did the court decide then, Dominic? Um, what, they, what the court declared in granting the injunction to Tesco was that a term that tried to prevent Tesco from firing and rehiring in order to remove this retained pay was implied into the contract. You can have implied terms into an employment contract, and this was a term that they implied into the contract. Um, and it also restrained Tesco from terminating the affected employees' contracts of employment for the purposes of removing or diminishing the pay that they would receive. And what the court found in granting an injunction was, it was just an equitable to, equitable to provide this type of remedy, as is the case with injunctions, because there was going to be a significant likelihood of injury or loss to the employee's legal rights because 
damages wouldn't be uh, a, an effective remedy for them. If you think about what the employees would have to do, they have to claim for an unfair dismissal type of claim, which would result in them lo losing their jobs. So it's quite a significant decision and is a lesson out there to employee employers who would often um, think that this is a way to change terms and conditions by offering fire and rehire. And this high court decision has, um, has effectively put pay to that. How can JMW's Employment Law Department help employers who would like to change terms and conditions of an employment contract? So in light of this case, Dominic, um, I think employers need to be very careful when they're putting in place terms and conditions, um, uh, especially terms and conditions that may be something slightly out of the ordinary as was being um, put forward in this case by Tesco in an attempt to buy out um, employees' terms and conditions. Um, so do think about that when you're putting in place your terms and conditions. And if you do find yourself in this situation where you do need to make a change to the contract, please do take some legal advice, go back to the contract. That's what the court is going to look at um, um, in terms of making, making a decision as they did in this particular case, which came down in favor of the employees. Simon, thank you very much for your insight. If you'd like to contact Simon and the employment law team at JMW, you can email insideman at jmw.co.uk or call 0161 82 81 999. I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man.